Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I'm going to be showing you how to make this really sweet mini album. It's a 10 page mini album but it holds a lot more pictures which I'll show you in a moment. It's just super cute. So it's using the binder rings here. It flips up from the top instead of the side. So I have used this one here. I have, let me grab, this is using the My Mind's Eye uh, oh what fun. Now this was from last year because this was actually given to me as a gift from Louise at Thompson's Craft Supplies but I will share all the links below for the newer um, collections that she's got in store now because there are so many fab ones and um, yeah you should definitely go and check it out. So that's this one and um, basically if I just bring it up here. So these were um, little kind of um, pre-cut die cuts and I just popped them on some red and then fussy cut them again just so they kind of are framed and stand out. I've used some flower soft here on the Santa's little uh, present sack there just to give a bit of texture and I've also used Winker Stella on his beard and on the reindeer's little antlers there. Everything's on foam adhesive then I've taken this piece here and I'm just remembering now that I still haven't done it I'm going to stamp the word Christmas just along here so it will have Merry Christmas but you'll see that in the video in the photos. Nice little bow detail there and then I've got my little um, kind of corner page protectors there that I like to use and then you just flip up each one now you can have a nice little I always like to if these are given as gifts I always put, like to put this belongs to or maybe put a little thing from myself and the date and all that kind of stuff it's just a nice touch so now you have these will all hold six by four photos it's a six by four only I would say photo album but you could certainly make them smaller and, and things like that and then each one flips down so bring that up there so you can see how that one looks. So you'd have one, two, by all means put a photo here as well, but I'm just keeping them plain just to you know enjoy the, the lovely papers. And then there's also one on the back. Okay, so I've done it so that you've got three photos on each of these, but you could certainly have four and use this one as well. So you don't have to put pattern paper here, you could just have another white one. And then you just flip through and that's exactly like they are on every one. So it's a really simple one, but I think really, really nice. And for me, I love all of the albums out there with all the tuck spots and all the flips and flaps and all that kind of stuff. But I like quite basic albums. I wanna just be able to take the album, open it up and see the photos. I don't mind little tuck spots or photo mats. I like that's about as far as I kind of go. And yeah, so this is these are my kind of preferred style um, mini albums. So you can see there, I'm just going through. So there's 10 pages, but because this is the binder rings, you can certainly add a lot more. So you could even double this in size if you wanted to. That's the nice thing about using the binder clips. It's easy to you know, extend. And then the back there is done exactly the same way as the front. By all means, you could decorate that as well. So there they are, they make beautiful gifts. You get a nice gift box, one of those um, kind of MDF boxes, and you could cover it in the same papers from the pack. Obviously these are Christmas themed because these are going to be gifts, but you can make these for any, you know, any year round. So any year round, any theme, all year round, that's probably better. Okay, so today I have already gone ahead and done lots and lots of pieces because it is really, really, really straightforward. Oh, just not my camera, there we go. Um, yeah, it's very, very straightforward. So I've already done my front, but I'm gonna go through and do the back with you all. So I've already gone and done nine of my pages because you don't need to see me do all them, but I did remember when I'd done them all and I'd gone and put my hole punches in, I forgot to put the decorative strip along here. So if I show you on this one, you can see they've all got that decorative strip. But after looking at it again, it doesn't actually matter. It still looks nice either way. So I will give you the measurements for the decorative strip, but you can see there, it still looks nice even though it's plain. So, those are those nine done and that's my front cover if I bring this one up I just adore this so we've got master polar bear got a little bow all the snowmen and again I fussy cut all of these pieces now this is using the Hell's Couple Ditch um, Christmas Village collection so I'll be um, sharing again all the links for that one as well but it is it's just adorable I love you know fussy cutting all the little images and building them all up and you can see there just how nice they look when you kind of mat them so that one's been matted on the red and this one I've mat matted matted them all on the green and um, again I'm going to talk you through the corners in a minute but I've already gone ahead and done the front the back's exactly the same it's just obviously not decorated so that's that one these are my corner protectors 
so I need four of them. Again, I'll share all the links to these ones. These are my favorite. I just really like the way that they look. So I've got the silver for this one and I use the bronzy color for the other one. So that's those. Then I've got my white eyelets, which I'll be using. And then we can start talking through all of these bits here. There's my binder rings. These are the, uh, let's have a little look here. One and three quarter. I can't remember what the mill of that is because these ones I believe are sold by the mill. So let's have a quick little look here. I think it's 45, yeah, 45 mil. Again, I'll share all those links for you because I buy these a lot. Okay, so for your pages, so you're going to need 10, that's what I'm using, but like I said, you can double this, you know, or even have less. You might want to add more bulk to yours. So this is a piece that is 10 by six and a half and you're just going to score every single one at four and five eighths of an inch okay and then just burnish and fold that in half and it, you don't want it to meet to the top because this is now where we're going to put our hole punches and then that's our page each one so we just need to add all of our mats and our layers onto that so you will need 10 of those then it's up to you how many white pieces so remember I said you may want to have this as a white piece as well if you do, then you're going to need, I think it was 30, what did I say? You need 30, yeah, that's it now. So you need 30 white pieces if you want to do it how I've done it. And then you'll need 10 of the pattern pieces, which is what I put on the front. If you don't want to do that, then you will need 40 pieces of this. So these are four and a quarter by six and a quarter. And that's, they're going to fit perfectly your four by six photos, giving them a nice white frame. Because you know, sometimes you can, you can choose to have that white frame put on your photos. Well, this will give you that white frame. So like I said, these are six and a quarter by four and a quarter, and you will either need 30 or 40 of those. Okay. So I'd say the, the, the longest part of this is prepping it all, because obviously there's quite a lot of bits that you need to cut out, but it's worth it. So that's those. Then if you do want to have the decorative piece, obviously that's that one there because I will be finishing it the same. Your chipboards, you'll need two pieces. This is five and a half by seven. Okay, so two pieces of chipboard and I am using, I think this was the two mil, yeah, two mil chipboard. Um, and this is the Trimcraft chipboard. Um, sorry, this is the Dovecraft chipboard by Trimcraft. <laughs> God, I've got some mouthfuls to say today. Again, I will share all the links in my blog for you. Um, this is a really nice one and it's easy to hole punch through and for your eyelets to fit, fit through as well. Then to decorate your inside, so this red piece here, and that's also on the back there, you'll need two pieces and that is six and three quarters by five and a quarter. And then you will need two pieces to decorate the main front and back of your cover and your, you know, your back cover. So I've got this polka dot here and you can see here, so I've got the like candy sweets and then I've got that nice stripe on that one. So for this one, like I said, I've got the polka dot and I'm going to have this on the back. So it ties in this nice masked polar bear and the to the snowman. It's that same paper and I just thought that would match in really nicely. So whatever you choose, you'll need two pieces and this is nine by seven. I've got a little bit cut off there, but it doesn't matter because there will be some excess. So yeah, nine by seven. And then if you want to do those strips, which I forgot to add, I even cut them, totally forgot. You are going to need 20 pieces because they go on the front and back of each one. So there's one there and then one there. Okay, but it is completely optional, but you actually do end up having scraps. So it was just a nice way to use up those loose pieces. But they are, so like I said, 20 pieces that are three quarters by six and a quarter. Okay, and I'll tell you when you need to stick them down. Well, you, you just want to stick them down before you put your hole punches in. So there you go, easy enough. Okay, so get rid of my scoreboard because that's everything we need to do there. And then what I'm going to do first of all is my back cover because I've already done my front cover so this, this is the same you will do this for the same for your front or your back okay and basically what you want to do is cover this I'm going to cover it in double-sided tape and also some wet glue because that gives me the wiggle room plus that extra strength as well so you just want to cover your chipboard in the tape I'm just going to rip mine and just try and get them all as close together try not to overlap you don't want to create any kind of bulk because you might see it through your um, pattern paper so you do just want to make sure you get them just you know as close together you can see there as possible ok 
Okay, and then just start to take off the backing paper here on the tape. Okay, so that's all of the backing, and then I've just got some of my glue here, and I'm just going to not cover the whole thing, but just just enough of it. Okay, and then you just want to pop it on here, just so you've got kind of an equal amount. I'm going to go a bit higher just because I've cut that bit. It was from where Fussy Cut, because I've been fussy cutting parts of the cover. Gosh, I'm trying to show you. Yeah, you can see where I was fussy cutting, and then I thought, oh, is it just going to stretch? Have I got just the right amount? And I thought, yeah, I can do it. So flip it over and just carefully just go over with your bone folder. Just, you know, make sure you've got no little air bubbles. And that's all. And because you haven't overlapped the double sided tape, you should feel it, and it should be nice and smooth, okay? So. Just make sure that is really stuck down nicely, like so. Okay, now what you want to do then is just kind of fold in the sides. So just kind of burnish in the paper, just to kind of help it along, like so. And then next what we're going to do is add a strip of double-sided tape on all of the outer parts. You may want to do two strips depending on how much of your paper you've got. See the one's fine there, I'm going to have to do two on the sides just because I've got a, um, more overhang there. It's just so that it's going to help obviously stick that down. You can obviously put it over all of it if you want. I'm not going to bother because I'm just going to stick um, the red piece once we cover that all up just with wet glue. Okay, like so. Then take off again all of this. There we go. Now, there are so many people have so many different ways of doing this, and I think just over the years, this is just my preferred way. So, what I like to do whenever you're using the chipboard, obviously, you've got quite a lot of height there. So, this is the two mil, some people use three, some people, some people use one. I like to go along with my wet glue and go right along that side piece because that has got enough kind of surface to stick to obviously the paper so it will just help give you a really nice um, sharp finish on your cover so just go and pop it all along there and you can see if I bring this one in see how nice and flat that is against the side of the chipboard it's because it's actually been able to stick there okay then next I want to pop some glue along kind of like three sides so come down in the corner like so and then you're going to bring this corner across so you get like a rectangle or a square depending on what size just spread that all out there and then because we put glue inside that bit as well push it down this is why your bone fold is good now because you won't get it all on your fingers and don't worry you want to have glue on this bit eventually anyway so just spread it down onto there and all onto this bit. I like too much glue. I like it to kind of squeeze out the sides because then I know that it's covered everything inside and all of that surface is stuck down. So, and then I'm just working it in. And this is how I do all my covers. So if you look back at all my previous, I'll link in up here all of my other mini albums. This is how I do it. So can you see now I've just created the kind of impression of the chipboard underneath there. And you've just got a really nice, you can see how that's finished because now we're going to be folding that over while well, we will do once we've done the other four corners. So again, just pop your glue over that kind of area and then bring it over and just kind of stick it down. Don't worry if it's a little bit out, but you want to get, make sure you get, you know, this is a square, that's a perfect rectangle. You don't want to be too crooked with it. But then again, if you are, it's still easily, you know, you can still sort it out, it's not a problem. And again, just use your bone folder there. Like so. And just really work that in. And you can see again there now, I've got that really nice finish. So I'm just gonna do that on the other two. I'm gonna have to kind of doctor that one a little bit because of the way it's uh, been cut. 
but um, just go ahead and get those all done. Okay, so that is my four corners all stuck down. And then what we want to do is just pop a little bit of glue along each side. Do one at a time and just kind of go up on the side first because you've obviously got that surface area. And you can see it does stick to it. See how it stands up? And I just go along there with my bone folder and again just squeeze all that glue out and you can see it kind of coming through there and then go over and stick that piece down. Again, squeeze out any glue and that way now you can see I've got a nice flat side along that chipboard and it looks really good. So just go around and do that on all of the other sides. Okay, so that's that all stuck down. Doesn't matter how it looks. I mean, everything is perfect apart from where I went a bit funny with the cutting, which is there, but actually you can't really notice it. Now it's all gonna get covered and the corners are obviously gonna get covered so you won't see anything, but that's the front. How nice does that look? Or well, in this case, it's my back, but how lovely is that? I love how that's perfect there and you can just see them all really, really well. So now you can grab this piece and you'll see there what I mean. It will stick perfectly. I don't want to stick it because it will tack to some of that glue. So I just want to make sure I put this all on first. Okay, and this is what I mean. You may want to put double-sided tape on there as well, but I'm not going to. I haven't before. So, and then just lie it down so you get a nice even border. It covers up everything. And then even if you don't have corner protectors, you've still got really nice corners there. I'll just bring that up. Okay, all nice and concealed. So I'm just gonna make sure that's all nice and stuck down. Okay, so now while that's just kind of drying a bit more, I'm gonna bring in one of my pages. So you will have 10 of these. And then what you wanna do is stick down all of those, let's get rid of all of this, stick, stick down all your mats and also that thinner strip if you want to do it. So what I would say, first of all, is stick down your white ones. So they are gonna go here. So I've got the score line. Make sure you give yourself the same border that you get on the sides. So line it up and then just lift up the white and you should have a nice same border. So you'll have one there, you'll have one there. And this one will flip up. If you've got a directional pattern paper, that will go there, just making sure it's facing up the right way. Then flip it over and that's where your other white one's gonna go on the back. Okay, make sure you put the back white one on the folded part, not on this part here, because obviously that's the wrong bit, and like so. So now if I bring this over, this bit here is where that strip will go, and also on the back here, that three quarters of an inch one will go in there. Okay, so I'm gonna go and get all those stuck down. Okay, so there are my, all my uh, mats and layers done there. A bit of that off there. So you're just going to want to do that on obviously your 10 pieces. Next we need to do the hole punching. So you would have stuck the strips down there if that's what you're doing. Um, again, it's entirely up to you where you want to do this. You want to grab your front or your back, doesn't matter which one, and grab one of your pages. And basically you want to sit your page, and you'll see there, you want to make sure that it all, oh actually, before we do that, let's pop these on because it makes it even easier to line everything up. So with these you pop them on so you've got the front obviously nicely facing up and then you can push them down so far like so so it kind of just gets them into place. Now I'm being lazy because my hammer's actually downstairs but I'm just going to hammer. This is These are really really strong actually but bear the banging, um, excuse the banging one minute. Okay, if I just bring that one up there, you can see all the teeth have gone inside the chipboard. If I turn that over, look how nice it looks on the front. So I'm just gonna go around and do that on all four of my corners. Okay, so now you can see they are all stuck down, all stuck down, they're all in place. Really nicely finished off and you just, it again, completely conceals all of your edges and corners there. So now again, grab this, grab this, and yeah, like I said, it's entirely up to you where you want to put them. So I have already started doing them, so I need to make sure they are all lined up with the same ones. But pretend, obviously, this one doesn't have the holes punched in it. You will just make sure it's, it comes up. Obviously, it's not hanging over the bottom here, and it's not hang, hanging over the top there. You've got even, you know, sides there. It just needs to be nice and centred, like so. And then what you would do is with a 
pencil and a ruler you want to kind of line up where you want to put them so in my case I have this one here is at one two two and three eighths of an inch coming in from that side and then it will need to be two and three eighths of an inch which it just about is from that side as well mark a little cross I'm going to actually do a little dot here going all the way through but you will mark a little cross in fact what am I doing I need to do this oh no all I've got to do is that with this one so I'm just going to do that and that okay so imagine they are obviously my crosses then I will grab my hole punch and then you just want to cut through we'll punch through get all my words mumbled up today like so and then with that one then you would go over this one pop it all back down in place and then pop your pencil marks inside like so and then get that one and put it on top of your next one and use this as your one that you will trace all of them so you don't need to go and measure each one just use that now and go over all the other nine of your pages okay then obviously get them all hole punched and then this one here I'm going to hole punch as well okay so that's those ones and then grab my my eyelets pop them through so that's that one there and oh that one there and just get both of those pressed like so and then I just need to do that on this one here like so so now I have my 10 pages let's get rid of all of that I've got my back which I can now pop there pop those other ones on top and then I've got that one going on the front. Again, I'll just show you, you the front there just so that you've got a bit of inspiration on what to do. This was just all die cuts from the same paper pack. If you are using a paper pack, they may come with pre die cuts like this one did here. Okay, so just have a little look and you may want to do something completely different on the front anyway, like lots of flowers and stuff like that. But that's it, it, it really is a dead easy um, album to do. And then you just want to grab your binder rings and just thread them through your pages and this was the one and three quarters um, I think I said but there is room if you did want to add some more and then my front and then grab my other one like so that one there my rings are a bit closer together but again it doesn't matter it's entirely up to you so let me just give you the measurement so I said that was two and three quarters this one here I came in at no two and a quarter this one was two and three quarters so it just shows you there the different looks that you'll get both just as nice but it's entirely up to you and I just love them they make beautiful gifts these are solid you know as long as you've got a good chipboard you're using a good quality you know paper pack that is a solid really lovely well finished gift and um, there's still plenty of time to make this this honestly doesn't take long to do at all just it's just a lot of cutting all the paper but that's it it's very straightforward and then there's lots of online photo um, printing companies and you can print 45 prints I use a company I can't remember their name I think it's Snapfish or my photo or something I'll share the links but in the UK you can print 45 photos for 199 I think it is so um, again you know it's it just it's just a nice inexpensive gift and something that's handmade and yeah my kind of gift so there you go hope you've enjoyed it guys if you have please as always give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more thanks for watching bye